Desmond Pringle. His voice can be heard on I Believe I Can Fly. He has shadowed Aretha Franklin, Marvin Sapp, and Yolanda Adams on CD and led the place on Shekinah Glory Ministries RII Certified Gold CD Live. He is a dedicated minister and a musician and a pastor. Welcome to the stage, Desmond Pringle. Hello, praise God. Okay, there we go. Praise God. How are you all doing? I trust that all is well. Can you hear me? Check, check. Can you all hear me? Great, great, great. Well, my assignment for this afternoon is one that I am beyond excited about. And I certainly, I would be remiss. And I know that I'll take this off of my time. Joey, you are absolutely phenomenal. And I'm telling you, what you said, you shared some very powerful and pertinent points. And I'm going to segue right into what uh, my assignment for today is. And the topic that I was given, given was walk in the favor of God. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you, as I was preparing myself to, uh, to, to make this presentation today, I was so blessed by the collection of biblical and scriptural data that supports this ideal, this idea of the favor of God. And I think that the favor of God is something that we should be very, very, very passionate about because even though in, in, in modern times or in our current day and time, there's a lot of talking points. It's, it's a catchphrase, it's a buzzword. But I'm telling you people of God, the favor of God is a formidable force that comes from the presence of God that he has intentionally devised and designed for we, his people. And so when we talk about walking in the favor of God, in the interest of time, I, I may, I'm putting forth every effort to be as succinct, but yet as substantive as possible. So one of the things that I like that I like, I love alliteration, and then I love acronyms. And so I'm going to, to, to try to uh, really squeeze uh, this information into an acronym today. And I'm going to begin talking about the favor of God from the perspective of worship. First, we need to understand and be uh, passionately and personally and purposefully involved in the worship of God. And worship is not the exclusive uh, usage of words. In other words, the songs that we say or the sing or the words that we say, but true worship is inclusive of the posture of our hearts, the perspectives of our minds, and the passion of our souls. The next thing I want to talk about is an acknowledgement. The Bible tells us in Proverbs 3, verses five through six, that we are to trust in the Lord with all of our heart and lean not to our own understanding, but in all our ways acknowledge him and he shall direct our paths. But notice this directing of our path is contingent upon our trusting in the Lord with all of our heart. And we all have the proclivity and we have the propensity to lean to our own understanding. But I want to encourage us today, as I encourage myself, that it's not that our lives are to be absent of logic, but we need to make sure that we need to, to preface our leaning on to logic, preface it with the prefix feel, feel God theological leaning, that we are leaning on the omnipotent, omniscient, all-knowing, all-wise knowledge of God. We're talking about walking in the favor of God because when we become, and as we are, dependent upon the logic, the intel, the wisdom, the counsel of God, we have three guarantees. We have a guarantee of direction, Mm -hmm. We have a guarantee that our steps will be ordered, and we have the guarantee that he is the guardian of our way. In other words, we're not just living life alone. 
We're not living life out on our own. We are not living life on our own terms. But we have divine intelligence. I love that designation of God. It is not. It is not intimidating. It is not something that is. Uh, it is not a secular perspective. It is absolutely a very correct perspective to see God as divine intel. Because I'm telling you one thing, people of God, and I'm excited today mm. about the favor of God, his unmerited favor. His, when, when God circumvents and usurps and imposes his authority, his influence in situations and circumstances that are beyond our capacity or faculties to manipulate and control, people of God, that is what the favor of God is all about. So the next thing I want to talk about with the favor of God, it's about life. It is about learning, and it is about our leading. What I mean by that, life, the Bible says in Psalm 30 and 5 that in his favor there is life. The Bible says in Matthew 11 and 29, Jesus said, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. And then in John 16 and 13, Jesus, uh, Jesus is talking to his disciples as he is preparing them for his departure. And he says unto them, how be it that when he has come, talking about the Holy Spirit, that one of the things that the Holy Spirit was designated to do, and that is to lead and guide us into all truth. So we're talking about life. The favor of God, in the, the life that is in the favor of God. We're talking about learning of Jesus. And then we're talking about the leading of the Holy Spirit. And this brings me to my final point, which is the knowledge. Oh, I wish I was, I wish we were not in a virtual context because right here I could use some energy from the audience and I would ask you to talk back to me. Somebody say, knowledge. Okay, hey, glory to God. The knowledge in Second Peter, the first chapter, verse number eight, the Bible says that if these be in you and abound, they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. There is a knowing that God wants us to come into, that we're not a people who are living life as though it were fairy tales, nursery rhymes. These are infallible truths. I think about when Jesus was talking with the disciples after he was crucified. The Bible says that he spent 40 days with his bones. And during that 40-day period, the Bible says that he gave them in fallible proofs. He showed them the nail prints in his hand. Why? Because he wanted them to know beyond a shadow of doubt. He wanted them to come into the knowledge of the truth. And I'm here to tell you people of God that this is the same disposition and the same position and the very same posture that our God in 2020 is holding for us and holding towards us. God is still wanting to undergird we, his church, with the powerful, with the powerful uh, fundamentals of his unadulterated word. So when we talk about the favor of God in my conclusion, I want to say this, that the favor of God is not a magic wand. The favor of God is not a good luck charm. The favor of God cannot be earned or deserved. And the, and the favor of God cannot be dispersed by our own election. The favor of God cannot be bargained or bartered. But the favor of God is distributed by God's soul, sovereign, and supreme selection. And so with that in mind, people of God, we are to be diligent, deliberate, and definite about my four points, as it were, I would say that these are the four legs of the table of faith. <laughs> and these four legs are, I told you about worship. Mm -hmm. I told you that we are to acknowledge. Mm -hmm. I told you that we are to learn. Mm -hmm. And I told you that we are to have knowledge. I'm going to say it one more time, that we are to worship. Mm -hmm. We are to acknowledge. We are to learn. And we are to obtain knowledge. 
when you worship W, when you acknowledge A, when you learn L, when you have knowledge K, W, A, L, K, that is the walk of favor. The walk of favor. And that is how we walk in the favor of God with worship, acknowledgement, learning, and knowledge. My time is up, and I thank you for yours. All right.